Welcome to the DaVinci Academy Histology video course. The entire video course is available on YouTube and covers all of the fundamental principles of histology and relevant cell biology. You can find all of the videos from the course by clicking the histology playlist link in the description below, and then you can access the corresponding practice questions and histology lab videos by going to our website, which is also linked in the description below. In the previous section, we looked at the single-layered epithelial tissues. In this segment, we'll look at the epithelial tissues that are made up of multiple layers of cells. All right, onto the stratified squamous epithelium. And as the name suggests, we're talking about layered epithelium with the squamous cells on top, the flattened cells on top. Such an epithelium is probably one of the more thicker epithelium. Therefore, there is actually within the tissue a basal compartment and the apical compartment. The basal compartment is characterized by the cells that are more cuboidal shaped. And these cells are also specialized in terms of how many hemidesmosomes they express because they're respons for, responsible for holding this entire epithelium down onto the basement membrane and therefore to the connective tissue underneath. And above that, in the apical surface, the cells are flat, but they express a lot of these tight junctions or occluding junctions, therefore providing this tight seal for this entire epithelium. And in between the two compartments, we have the cells that have a lot of desmosomes in order to hold onto each other. And as thick as such an epithelium is, the stratified squamous epithelium has protective function for the connective tissue underneath from force, friction, as well as any kind of microbe or pathogen invasion. But this occurs in wet condition or moist condition because the cells on the apical most surface are still alive. They need fluids. Every single cell needs to be bathed in fluids and not dry out in order to be alive. So this type of tissue will find in the oral cavity, esophagus, distal anal canal, vagina, and cervix. So areas that's encountering a lot of bacterial presence, as well as relatively frequent force and friction in those areas, requiring some protection for underlying connective tissue. Here's the histology of stratified squamous epithelium. Here's the connective tissue and epithelial tissue boundary, where the basement membrane would be. And we can see that the epithelial tissue has the basal compartment with these kind of more cuboidal cells. And interestingly enough, the cells in the basal compartment seem to be smaller because these are not only the cells that express hemidesmosomes, but there are a lot of stem cells there as well that are dividing in order to replace the cells that are shedding from the apical surface. And as we move towards the apical surface, we're starting to see the flattening of the cells and their nuclei. And even on the apical most surface, we have cells that are super flat, but still retain the nuclei suggesting that these cells are still alive. So that's stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. And then we have the counterpart, the stratified keratinized squamous epithelium. So the tissue architecture is very similar to the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, but the apical most surface, the flattened cells are actually dead. So we're not expecting to see any nuclei in those cells. And their function is to provide protection in the dry condition. So the cells up here are all dried and dead cells, but because they're kind of forming a nice protective layer, still holding on to the live cells, they're able to provide a lot more protection, not only from the force and friction, but also from the bacterial invasion, as well as the tissue itself kind of drying out. So such an epithelium is found in our skin. So again, here's the connective tissue, and here's the epithelial tissue. 
And we can see the live compartment with cells and their nuclei, although the cells are starting to flatten out as we get closer to the apical surface. Beyond the live cells, we have this layer of dead cells, the keratinized layer that's still holding onto the live cells underneath. And this is a layer that is providing all these protective function. And the boundary between the live and dead cells, there's also a lot of kind of lipid deposits that is effective at kind of preventing any water loss from the underlying connective tissue or water sipping into the connective tissue. So it forms a nice waterproof boundary for our skin as well. The stratified cuboidal epithelium are not the most common type of tissue. They're comprised of usually just two layers of cells, with the basal cells typically being a little more lower columnar cells, or they're a little more flatter, but not completely squamous, and the apical cells being a little more plumper cuboidal cells. So such a tissue is typically found in the ducts, providing the structural support to keep the lumen patent. So here's the histology of stratified cuboidal epithelia. Here's a bunch of connective tissue. Here's connective tissue down here as well. Connective tissue, connective tissue. And here is the basement membrane that separates the connective tissue from this epithelium. And here's the lumen. So sitting on top of the basement membrane, we have this more flatter epithelial cells or cuboidal cells that are a little more flat. And on top of that, we have another layer of plumper epithelial cells. So that's a duct that is lined by the stratified cuboidal epithelium. Looking at this image now, now that I pointed one duct out, see if you can find some others. Here's a duct made up of stratified cuboidal epithelium with the lower cuboidal cells making up a nice little line back there and another layer of cells forming the apical compartment. Here's another duct. Here's another duct. And here's another duct. I like this duct because I like to point out this one cell. See this flattened basophilic nucleus? This cell is not a part of the epithelial tissue. It's actually sitting outside of the basement membrane. So if I were to trace this cell in a more exaggerated way, it would look like that. So this type of cell is called the myoepi. Epithelial cells. Myoepithelial cells are usually associated with ducts or glands that sit just under the basement membrane, really closely associated with the epithelial tissue. And they have some contractile properties. And when they contract, they're assisting the excretion of the products that are traveling through the lumen of the duct or glandular tissue. So that was an opportune observation of myoepithelial cell that we will likely come across again when we discuss the glands and ducts. Another stratified epithelium that is not quite as common is the stratified columnar epithelium. And such a tissue is also comprised of typically just two layers of cells. And despite the way this diagram is drawn, the basal compartment cells tend to be more cuboidal in shape, so, the, so they're really short and rounded cells. And it's really the apical surface cells that are the true columnar cells in terms of their morphology. And such an epithelium is typically associated with larger ducts, where this epithelium is able to provide some structural support and protection and keep the lumen open. But in addition to the larger ducts, Stratified columnar epithelia are also found lining the conjunctiva or conjunctiva, the mucus lining of the whites of our eyes as well as the inside of our eyelids. And this tissue looks like this. Here's the conjunctiva, and here's the epithelium, 
and here's the connective tissue underneath. And as we can see, the basal cells are cuboidal in shape, and their nuclei are forming a nice row of nuclei in the basal compartment. And then the apical compartment has these true columnar cells. And you may note that these columnar cells on the apical compartment is staining pale. And that's because this compartment is filled with mucin, which is mucus-like material that are secreted by these cells onto the surface of this tissue to keep this tissue moist and protect the underlying epithelium. So these mucin-filled cells are also known as the goblet cells, as we've seen before, goblet cells. So in addition to structural support and protection, we could also add secretion here as well. And at last, we've arrived at the transitional epithelium, the odd one out. This is the tissue that's made up of many layers of cuboidal cells. And these cuboidal cells are actually sometimes also called the dome or umbrella cells. And that's because some of these cells, especially at the apical surface, seem to kind of dome out or round out into the external surface or environment, especially when the organ is not distended. And another characteristic of the transitional epithelium is the fact that the nuclei of this tissue tend to be staggered all over the place as opposed to forming a nice neat little rose as would be the case in stratified cuboidal epithelium. And this tissue of course is characterized by the reduction of the number of cell layers with the organ distension as well as the dome or umbrella cells that tend to flatten out when the organ becomes distended. And they're characteristic of the major urinary tract lining. So we, we call them the urothelium as well. And here is a urothelium from the urinary bladder. Here's the epithelial tissue. Here's the connective tissue. And these are all comprised, the epithelial tissue itself is comprised of these dome cells or rounded cuboidal cells kind of through and through and the apical most cells tend to dome out into the external environment as we can see some cells are actually binucleated here you can see two nuclei side by side this one is also so these are all the characteristic morphological cues that we can take to identify a urothelium Thank you for watching this video from the Da Vinci Academy Histology video course, which is completely available on YouTube. To access the corresponding practice questions and histology lab videos, go to our website using the link in the description below.